All right, everyone, I normally don't even bother to talk about singular polls or even singular polling firms within an aggregated period because, again, single polls are never as accurate as aggregates. If they show what you want to see, then that's your own personal intrinsic bias. Karl Rove learned this the hard way in 2012. Nate Silver learned this in 2016, which was inexplicable because it's like, you know, <laughs> you were one of the best odds makers in 2012 and 2014, totally fucked up in 2016. To the point where, like, you know, a handful of YouTubers were doing better, myself included. Um, but this particular poll is compelling. Mason Dixon tends to be quite accurate. It's right up there with the top polling firms, roughly 85% accuracy in judging results. They released new polls um, in matchups between Trump and, and his top competitors, the top four, for two different states, for Virginia and Florida. These are probably going to be two of the hottest contests in 2020. If I had to guess, I'd say the biggest contests will come down to Pennsylvania. Can Trump retain it as red or will it default back to blue? Remember, it had been a lean Republican state for several decades until basically the post-Clinton era. It started getting more blue. Trump managed to reverse that. Pennsylvania, Virginia, we got to see the fallout from the gun control debate. This is a uh, debate. This is a state that had been red and then was lean red very slightly and le recently has begun to lean slightly blue. We've got to see, though, what the effect of Northam's policies are. You know, you've got the blackface governor is running things for the Dems there. And then you've got the possibility of an attempt to mass disarm people. It could even cause quite a bit of violence, although, thankfully, I don't think that's particularly likely. I think hopefully cooler heads prevail. We've got to see what effect that has. And then Florida is a perennial. Florida really should be the first state within the primaries for both parties because it is the most competitive state. It's been razor thin in election after election for so long now. At what point can we say, demographically, northern Florida is like a microcosm of, of Dixieland. Southern Florida is basically the same as a, an urban Democrat stronghold like, you know, Silicon Valley or northern New England. And then the middle of the state is, is as swing as you can possibly get. It's literally 50-50 in the uh, corridor between Tampa and Orlando. What we need to do, therefore is try to look at the polls and determine states. We can't just say, well, Trump is two points behind in the national polling, so he loses. That's talking about popular vote, and even then the numbers might be right. The Mason-Dixon poll shows Trump beating three of four of the top opponents, everyone other than Biden, by the way, uh, in both Virginia and Florida. I believe these numbers because they comport to what I expect within reality, which is that Donald Trump, if he's running against somebody like Elizabeth Warren, I cannot imagine Elizabeth Warren doing well in a state like Virginia. I think maybe a little bit more in Florida. I just can't imagine that she would be taken seriously by the kind of suburban voters she would need to woo. I understand that the D.C. suburbs have gotten more blue over time, but when you're talking about turnout that's often in the 50s or 60s, county by county, all it takes is a little extra turnout to stop someone anyway. Bernie Sanders fares even worse. Why? Because Bernie Sanders doesn't do well with independent voters. He does very well with the far left. He does very well with younger voters. He doesn't do well with certain critical voting blocks that the Democrats desperately need in the swing states. It doesn't matter if Bernie has an extra million San Francisco students voting for him. It doesn't matter if everybody in New Hampshire votes for him. That's only one swing state. Bernie Sanders probably would easily win New Hampshire in a general election. I don't even, I mean, it wouldn't even really be on the table. He'd be probably 10, 15 points ahead. It's like his second home. In Maine, which has been getting a little bit more red over time, he probably takes Maine off the table. He might take a state like Iowa away. But in Virginia, in Florida, a little bit less so apparently. Booty Judge does poorly. I think he does a little bit better than the other two in, in Virginia, if I remember correctly, and less in Florida. Um, but all of them trail Trump. Now keep in mind, Trump's approval is in the mid-40s right now. If a person in a state that's almost a 50-50 matchup every fucking election is trailing Trump by two or three points in a 50-50 state, while Trump is not particularly popular, what happens towards the end of the election when Trump inevitably gains more popularity because he's running against a discrete individual instead of a group? See, the problem uh, with judging the polls right now is this. Trump isn't running against Biden. Trump isn't running against Bernie Sanders. Trump is running against whatever Dem you would match him up against and like more in head-to-head. -head. That's really what it's about. None of these people have fleshed out a general election platform yet. It's an unknown quantity. Trump 
therefore is arguably winning three out of four times against unknown quantities in states where he arguably, due to his low approval, should be behind. He shouldn't, he shouldn't be anywhere near ahead in Florida against anybody at the moment, judging by national standards in polling. And the national aggregate, the one that shows Trump's approval, again, between 44 and 45, which is relatively mediocre, we know that that number is close to accurate. We've got a million aggregated data points. So if Trump is still ahead in these states, that's terrible for the Dems. It shows low enthusiasm maybe for their party, number one, um, a high degree of dislike and disdain for their platform or maybe their behavior. Part of that, I think, is definitely related to impeachment. Trump will, will run away with it in 2020 if he's, you know, two or three points ahead in Florida, of all places. He barely won it. He won it by, what was it, 0.2%? If he can get 2 or 3% instead of an advantage against a Democrat in a state like Florida, and, and let alone win in a state like Virginia, which is getting more blue over time, he'll blow it out of the park. He wins the Rust Belt probably at that point. Even Bernie Sanders might, might even manage to lose New Hampshire, which would be, you know, the icing on the cake for everyone who hates him, which includes me. Uh, Biden, meanwhile, fares better. But again, Biden, a name with extreme name recognition, um, the only moderate platform there at the top echelon that you could, well, you could argue that it's moderate. Obama nostalgia is arguably a strong candidate in, in some capacities, albeit not in verbal acuity. He barely wins by like a point or two against somebody whose approval struggles to hit 45 on a good day. In, in Virginia, of all places, a state that, again, has been more and more blue. Hillary Clinton won it by, well, in the end, tally, what was it, two points or something. It's not a huge margin, but it's a win. She'll take it. She gets the electoral votes from it. Uh, that wouldn't be good. That would mean Biden is about as effective as Hillary was in 2016 and all these other people are losers. And would be like, say, you know, like your Jimmy Carter re-election bid or Walter Mondale or something. If Trump can get 2 or 3% advantage in Virginia, that shows a significant swing. That's almost a five-point swing. And now, of course, this is one polling firm. I'm not putting too much stock in it. I would like to see more polling from these states. One thing is that the state-to-state -state polling has been so fucking sporadic, and we had this problem in 2016. Can your polling firms possibly crowdfund more data points for those of us who need to analyze? Like, can those of us who actually want to aggregate your polls, can we tell our fans, can you open, like, a Patreon page, and we'll tell our fans to chip in a dollar or two so that we can get more data, so we can give them a more accurate result? Can we get something going, like a YouTube polling syndicate or something for this? I'm not even, I'm not even joking at this moment. I want more data points, especially from firms that are good, like Mason Dixon's fine, YouGov, Quinnipiac, most of the time, Emerson, some of these other groups, um, Rasmussen, a little bit less. I wouldn't give anything to CNN or MSNBC at this point, but you know some of these polling firms are relatively decent. YouGov is number one. I want more data, uh, for, especially from Florida and Virginia. If we can tell, if we get enough data points from Florida, we can probably tell how the national election is going to go just from that one data point as long as we know roughly what Trump and his opponent's approval will be throughout the general. If we go into the election roughly knowing that, we can sort of get an educated guess. We can probably tell what's going on. We can fix the other numbers according to a state that is almost fucking dead set 50-50 time after time after time. We can't do that right now, of course. We don't have enough friggin' polling numbers. I wish we did. Anyway... I expect Trump to win, um, not just based on this, although this is definitely something that... He, I mean, if he looked at the numbers, you'd be hearing all about the Mason-Dixon poll from every fucking news outlet right now if it had shown the opposite. If it showed that Trump trails all Democratic candidates, that would have been the news of the day. It would have at least been the top of page two, or the top of the politics page trending on CNN. Well, Trump eclipsed by all Democrats. Loser Trump cannot win in Florida or Virginia. 2020 election basically decided. That's what the news of the day would be. Meanwhile, in non-La La Land, uh, at the end of the year, various odds makers and political wonks weighing in, and a lot of them expect Trump to win. They're not very hopeful about the Democrats. If you think that there are a lot of black-pilled Trump fan Republicans right now, the Democrats are looking worse, dude. They're way more demoralized. Of course, you wouldn't know that reading CNN. That's the whole point. They're still they're trying to prop up their long-term mythology that Trump colluded with a foreign state and can't possibly be reelected because he's orange man bad. It's just an attempt to cover their asses. And if he does win in 2020, at the very least, they can clickbait for the next four years. 
That's about all. Peace out.